Uh, my favorite Beatle was Paul McCartney. First of all, I guess as a young girl, just uh, the way he looked, he was very cute, very funny and very sweet, nice, very warm personality. Did you think he was good looking? Yeah, I still think he's good looking. Is he almost like the sort of person your mother would approve of? Absolutely. No question about it. My mother would definitely approve of him. It was an ordinary day. I was a freshman in high school. Something was wrong just from walking in the class. People were very upset. People were crying. The first thing that was said to me when I walked in the class was, did I hear? Did I hear what? Did I hear that Paul was dead? Paul McCartney was dead. People were crying. I was just shocked. I said, no, I hadn't heard, I hadn't nine, heard that. I actually had to nine, sit down and they said, nine, it's, you know, nine, it's, it's the rumor, nine, it's all around that, that, nine, that Paul McCartney was dead. Nine, it was nine, just devastating. Nine, has Paul McCartney left this world? Has he taken his last breath? Have John and George and Ringo told us of his death? Never made the paper. You didn't read it in the news. But it's right there for you to find in several hidden. He was in a car wreck. He was in a, an Aston Martin. He had left the studio. They'd had a bad session. Uh, things were not going well. It was a rainy night. Skidded off the road and hit a culvert. It sheared the top of his head off. It was apparently in October 1969 that a caller rang into a disc jockey called Russ Gibb asking if Paul McCartney was dead. Gibbs would call in, and on a Sunday, somebody called me and said, Did you hear Paul was dead? What's your name? Uh, Tom on the line. Yeah, hello, Tom. What's going down? I was going to rant with you about uh, McCartney being dead. What is this all about? You heard that McCartney was dead. Yeah, that's right. I sort of brushed the kid off, and he said, Well, no, but have you ever played a record backwards? And I said, What? And he said, Number nine, number nine, when you play it backwards, it's this. Playing this uh, revolution number nine backwards. Yeah. And did you hear about that? No. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. And when I played it backwards and spun it backwards, it said. Turn me on, dead man. 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 I freaked. Yes, Glenn. Michael, can you turn over? I'm turning now. It was on the news. Yes, it was. Oh, darling. And the day we did the show, there were hundreds and hundreds of people piled up outside. Cars were jammed up. The police were moving them along. It was absolutely crazy. I cried. I cried on and off all day. I even uh, remember coming home and couldn't wait for my mother to get home from work and all through dinner I couldn't even eat my dinner I sat and cried at the dining room table about it to, to my mother my mother was very sympathetic and she was just trying to explain to me that it's a part of life please believe me darling when you're young you haven't experienced things like that and it's just one of the things that you have to learn to accept he was deader than a doornail. The true story of the Beatles. If you have not been able to obtain it, you can still get it direct. And that night, I was walking down the street in Ann Arbor, and 
every house that I passed was playing Beatle records. Every one. And some of them playing them backwards. This is way bigger than I imagine. Have the mic on the piano quite low. This In the late 1960s in Ann Arbor, it was a... By 1969, you're coming to the end of this magical decade. Upheaval. It was a center of anti-war protest. And it was a pretty weird year. What hippie culture evolved into. The Manson murders. Charles Manson looked like a hippie. Fascinating place to be. It was a, a psychopath who went around murdering celebrities. Sugarbone fairy, sugarbone fairy. Black power was making itself felt. Men walked on the moon. Stones played in Hyde Park. The so-called underground was finding its own voice. Underground was finding its own voice. There was a feeling in the air that if you could dream it, you could do it. James Paul McCartney was born on the 18th of June, 1942, in Liverpool. Now at the age of 27, he is either a millionaire beetle with a beautiful wife, or he's dead. Then, of course, the, the clues began to emerge. If you listen to Strawberry Fields Forever, turned up really, really loud. At the very end, you can hear John say, I buried Paul. On the cover of Abbey Road, the four of them walking across the zebra crossing, John was dressed as a priest, Ringo was the undertaker, George was the grave digger, and Paul was dead because he didn't have any shoes on. Then they started looking at the Sergeant Pepper's sleeve. Paul is wearing a badge OPD, which obviously meant officially pronounced dead. At the end of Iron the Walrus, again, if you play it backwards, you can apparently hear somebody saying, Ha ha, Paul is dead. Are you going to write another? <sighs> yeah, OK. Yes, I, I am, but I, know, I, know, I just realised there's a dash. I really I do gonna get write, Are you going to write another? Yes, day? I know, because I really do get fed up with. No, may I just say, May I just have a spot of shirt and give yourself. No, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm. I'm Diane Perkis, Professor of English at Oxford University. And I'm very interested in even prehistory ideas about how you explain things that can't be explained with rational common sense knowledge, but rather the way that, despite our efforts, stuff surges up from inside ourselves. Our great hobby was playing records backwards in the hope of finding some exciting secret in them. And in the end, we decided that you could find anything if you looked for it. Would you sit around then in a group? Uh, Absolutely. Playing the records backwards? Yeah, yeah. And seeing if we could listen to anything. The, the great thing about LPs is that you can kind of muck about with them in a way that you really can't with CDs, let alone MP3s. The fun part of it is that they're sort of physical objects. And in fact, it turned out later that recorded backwards tracks are really old. Edison, actually, very early in the recording era, started playing some stuff backwards to see how it sounded. And he was very struck by how melodic it was. More scarily, Alistair Crowley, the man who called himself the most wicked, the wickedest man in the world, urged his followers to practice their magic by listening to records played backwards. He said that listening to things backwards would get you into the right frame of mind to, for your training as a magician. This idea that playing things backwards is a way of turning the world upside down or accessing some kind of power hidden within language itself or within music itself. Oh, yeah. The rumour then got out that Paul McCartney died in a road crash in 1966 and had been replaced in the Beatles by a lookalike called William Campbell. Well, here's another clue for you. William Campbell, nobody's entirely sure. This would be October 14th, 1969, Tuesday morning, the Michigan Daily. And there's a front page, you see all the stuff going on. And then you turn to page two, and there it is. McCartney dead. New evidence brought to light. In 1969, I was a student at the University of Michigan. 
Because I was a critic at the time, a movie critic and a music critic. My editor assigned me to review Abbey Road, which had just come out. The little snippets that I got from that radio show raised the hair on my neck. It was a creepy feeling. So if Paul was, had died in 1966, who were we actually looking at all these years up to your revelation in 1969? That was William Campbell. And William Campbell, who's he? He was uh, the winner of a uh, Paul McCartney look-alike contest. And he kind of sounded like Paul. Whose idea was getting in the imposter? It was John Lennon's idea. They were still at the studio when the word came back that Paul had met his demise. They went into seclusion, I think, for two or three days. And when they came out, they meditated and talked about it uh, with Brian Epstein and everybody. And then they said, well, we'll not tell the world about this and we'll replace him and we'll let the world know through a series of clues which we'll put on the album covers and in the music. This is all part of a scheme for it's the welcoming in of a new religion. Paul is the Messiah and the, the cover of Abbey Road is about John and, and George is the grave digger and Ringo's the undertaker because of their uh, the clothes they're wearing and uh, Paul is barefoot like they bury people in England. Do we know much about William Campbell? I don't know much about him, no. I think he's Scots. He's a Scotsman. Ah. Ah. I'm now looking at pictures of Paul McCartney, one of which is labelled William Campbell. And I note the focus is on a difference in ear shape. So quote, Paul McCartney, unquote, has a larger lobe on his ear than William Campbell. One, two, three, four. If people don't wish to be convinced, no amount of denial from Apple will make any difference. Hello, Miss... Yes, Derek Taylor. Yes, yeah, sure. How are you, sir? I'm fine. I'm just going to tell you, McCartney is alive to prove he's alive, apart from be alive. I think if you could, we could talk to Paul, and if he could dispel it, that would be the greatest thing that could happen around this town. Well, it'd certainly be great to have a tape of Paul saying he's not there, but it gets very grotesque. If people don't believe that the man who married Linda, or that the man who sang Maxwell's Silver Hammer, or the man who was on the photograph on the Abbey Road cover is Paul, who's going to believe that his voice on the air is Paul? I'll tell you what we'd like answered, if possible, Derek. Yeah. Yeah, because we'd like to put this... Because he's on vacation. Could you answer these questions? Yes. Why the preoccupation with death and exotic symbolisms of death? Are you aware of any preoccupation with death or any symbolism? These, these are not things that we are aware of. What the, the trouble with discussing symbolism is that unless there are two parties to the symbolism, it's, it's you showing me things that I don't believe. And are you aware that uh, in uh, I Am a Walrus, the song, that in the end, they quote from King Lear about bury the body here, untimely death. I think that's about chapter nine. That's, well, what happened there was that was a tape of a, a radio play. They taped British radio. They taped radio stations in England, various radio stations for, for that medley at the end of Iron the Walrus. And there's that portion from King Lear. But most of that sort of thing is haphazard, you know. Symbolism, which is not really in it. You know. These, most of these things are just done on the spur of the moment. Suppose I tell you he's a lie. Where does that leave us? That leaves us to the fact that I think that you are an honest man. I've never heard otherwise. But I also think that the Beatles are very clever men. I, I think that John particularly. I've... They're not nearly as clever as that. Uh, you don't believe so? They're nearly as clever as you suppose. <laughs> Was there a contest held for a double for Paul a couple of years ago? No, we never ran anything like that. Paul McCartney isn't dead, and the only proof we have that he's alive at this point is that he is. You don't have to do any more than that to prove you're alive, except be alive. You don't have to produce yourself, you don't have to appear on television or speak, or even make a statement. You just have to be alive to make the point, if only to yourself.
Actually, I heard it on TV that it might all be a rumor. And then, of course, later there was a press conference. We, I actually saw Paul was there. Pleasure to report that Beatle Paul McCartney is alive and well, and as he puts it, unconcerned about the rumors of his death. Now, there he is. He walks, he talks, he sings. your mind there's really nothing to it come on let's try it one more time i said shake i mean shake it somebody else was singing at a time when the fans and when the label would indicate that it was paul mccartney I think the substitution is something that just recurs in folklore, and the best-known example of it is the myth of the changeling, the idea that your baby has disappeared and been replaced by a fairy baby that looks exactly like it. And initially, you try and care for the fairy baby, but gradually it becomes more and more different. Typically, it refuses to eat, or it shows supernatural knowledge. At that point, folklore has some pretty horrendous stories of people trying to urge the fairies to come back and retrieve their baby, basically by torturing the changeling child, by making it sit on hot coals, perhaps a little more gently sit on a dunghill. And the idea is that the fairies will then rush back to retrieve their baby and resupply your baby instead. This could happen to adults as well as to babies. So adults could be replaced by an imposter who is yeah. a fairy. Yeah, exactly. In the 1890s, there's a case in Ireland of a man called Michael Cleary who decides his wife, Bridget Cleary, has been replaced by a fairy changeling. And he actually makes numerous efforts to rid himself of what he sees as an imposter. And eventually he is forced to adopt the remedy of setting fire to the house with Bridget in it, or with the changeling in it, as he thinks, and she duly dies in the fire. But are there subtle signs in the changeling that then maybe they're not, you know, all isn't what it seems? An awful lot of folklore is about how you can detect the presence of a changeling. The normal way to go about it is to trick the changeling into expressing supernatural knowledge. Typically, too, a changeling will be an exact replica when the changeover first occurs, but with the passage of time, more physical differences uh. will emerge. And typically, they tend to start to look older and thinner. Their hair falls out. They lose a lot of weight. They become hollow-cheeked. Are changelings said to have especially good hearing. Yeah, they're supposed to be able to hear things that other people can't hear, rather like dogs. That, so in particular, they're supposed to be able to hear the other world. Important to note that the fairy other world isn't a different place, so much as this place, it, it happens within our reality. It's simply that we can't see it. Do you want us to do it again, George? OK. Whether this has any significance, I don't know. With Siggy in mouth. Why did these fairies want to inhabit? The short answer is fairies like tricks, and they find it funny. They find human beings funny. We had such enormous affection and made them so important in our lives. The notion that one of them would be dead was just so stunning. Even to say it gave it a kind of a power. Did, did you have great fun coming up with the clues? I had a ball. I was laughing right out loud. Like all great hoaxes, I guess, there's enough to it that's, that's like, yeah, that really could happen. Paul was the one in the group that acted as a bridge between the strangeness of being the Beatles and the sense of what an ordinary young man of that time might be like. He was the one that was approved of by mothers. Ever such a nice lad. Lennon, bit more dodgy. George Harrison, bit strange. It had to be Paul, the nation's sweetheart child. It would be Paul because... The changeling doesn't swap out the older brother. No, the changeling swaps out the adorable, dimpled, cute one. John Lennon had already been replaced by a changeling some time yes, ago. Yes, exactly, that's right. And, and therefore, in a way, nothing could be lost or gained. 
all these changeling myths are tied up with people's feelings about their children. And the 60s was such a watershed for people's feelings about their teenage and early 20s children, a period where I suspect lots of parents felt that their own children had become strangers to them, as if they'd been swapped out for fairy children. And so that's one of the functions I think the Paul is Dead myth performed within the culture, that it was a way for parents and teenagers to negotiate the feelings created by the new estrangement. But it's fun to believe in fairies. And do, do you think it's fun to believe that Paul is dead? I think all conspiracy theories are dangerous. But instead of sort of saying to yourself, OK, I don't like this, it's unjust, I'm going to do something about it, you decide that it's impossible to take any action because they will never listen and they will never agree that you even exist. So I think conspiracy theories and the mentality that they bring with them are one of the worst things in the world. And they've also excused most of the genocide that took place last century. The idea that the Jews are conspiring against everybody else is a conspiracy theory. Stalin's purges were part of a conspiracy theory. Eventually, you decide to take action against the evil people who are oppressing you, and then you end up, if you're lucky, like Mark Chapman, if you're very unlucky, like Hitler or Stalin. Gosh, I didn't expect, <laughs> I didn't expect it to I'm, be that I've, dangerous. I've got very, very strong views that conspiracy theories yeah. are really the, one of the greatest menaces to democracy. Where it gets dangerous is where you think that people are deliberately keeping the truth from you. And, and you that, have to do something and, about it. Yeah, exactly. And that to, to resolve it, you have to kill them. Which way did John go? At the very beginning of this tape, which I'm about to play for you, uh, the first words he's saying, which are kind of off mic, are John Lennon and his wife had just returned from a recording studio. I'll let him take it from there. Uh, Oko Uno had returned from a recording studio and had alighted from a limousine at this point. We're not sure if the limousine was inside the driveway or if it was outside on the street. They went into a, a little vestibule inside, and as he was walking through the vestibule, this individual, who is unidentified at this point, fired five shots from a 38 caliber charter arms pistol. I just laughed it off, but it was a little bit strange, because people did start looking at me like... Yeah. Is it? Is it him yeah. or a very good double? Well, that was the idea. That was the other part of it, that there was a guy who looked like you taking your place. No, well, this is him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? 